Roger was born in 1945, on March 20th. His brother Richard had been born two and a half years earlier, at Withington Hospital. But Roger arrived at Lorna Lodge, a private nursing home in Didsbury. His father Ted felt that as they were expecting a breech birth, Dorothy deserved a bit of extra care and attention. Although, had there been a serious problem with the birth, she would probably be better off in hospital. Dorothy made notes about her family and for Roger she recorded that after the birth, just before midnight, it took 15 minutes to resuscitate him before he breathed, she said. We are lucky to have him. He was £7.14, ounces, a good weight. In her diary for April 25th, Dorothy recorded, Roger's strong as a horse, tries to sit up. He was not quite five weeks old. The mixture of a robust constitution and medical problems were to recur throughout Roger's life. By March the following year, he was standing up in his cot and by June, Dorothy records him crawling upstairs. One result of his precocious activity were injuries. In July, he had a black eye, a scab on his nose and a bruised forehead. More accidents were two cuts to his head in 1951 and in 1953 and a more serious cut to his hand which needed clips. Roger seemed destined for a life of being accident prone. For the first eight years of his life, he lived with his parents and a brother at 98 Parkville Road in Withington, the suburban district of South Manchester. Home was a semi-detached rented house, a typical interwar property with downstairs and a front room, a back room which was the everyday living area and a kitchen and scullery downstairs. Upstairs were two bedrooms, a box room and a bathroom and toilet. He was baptised in May that year at St Margaret's Whaley Range, near to where Ted's parents lived. Dorothy's father was a godparent. Before she was married, Dorothy was employed as a shorthand typist for the Shell Mex company and at the beginning of the war had been evacuated to Leicester to continue working there. After marriage, she settled into life as a housewife and never did paid work again. This was a reflection of her and perhaps even more strongly Ted's traditional view of a married woman's role. It was made possible by his earning a good salary. They had a stable family life, fairly affluent, if not luxurious. They didn't have foreign holidays, buy expensive clothes or dine out. They lived in a modest house, but owned a car and were clearly better off than most people on their road. They might best be described as middle, middle class. Opposite and to the left was Fog Lane Park between number 98 and the entry that ran through to Henry Street. There was at first a derelict area where four houses had stood before they were destroyed by a bomb early in the war. This happened before Ted and Dorothy moved in and despite the closeness the only damage 98 had suffered was all its windows being blown and a hole in the roof. Until the houses were rebuilt in the late 1940s, this bomb site was used by Roger and his brother, and no doubt other local children as a play area. Roger had been born at the end of the war, and by then there was no longer any bombing of Manchester, although the industrial districts of the city had been major targets earlier on. Toys were scarce after the war, but fortunately Dorothy's dad was an excellent carpenter and made things for Richard and Roger. One of these was Brownie. Dorothy recalled Granny and Grandad going out to look at the milkman's horse to get it right.
The saddle was made from a gas mark carrier. Both grandads also made building bricks. Most of the time during Roger's early years was spent in and around the house and on Parkville Road. The big event of the family year was always the annual holiday. Dorothy was never happy in the industrial north and looked forward all year to summer and a one or late, later two weeks escape. The summer holiday in 1945 was at Colwyn Bay on the North Wales coast. Granny Brown joined the family. Her husband had died earlier in the year. They travelled there by car. The war was nearly over. The two brothers played in the garden on the street, then almost empty of traffic and especially in Fog Lane Park. They had a den in bushes, probably rhododendrons. In the corner of the park just over the road from their house and although they were not especially noisy or cheeky, were told off by the occupant of the last adjacent house, a Mrs Rackhouse, who they named as Mrs Rathouse. On one occasion, they were chased out of the park by a parky across the road and down to the entry, entry to Henry Street. What they had done to upset him is lost to memory. Perhaps it was playing on the bandstand, now long gone. Parkies, park keepers, also long gone, were employed by the council to warden these public areas. They probably had little real power, but as children, were seen as figures of authority not to be crossed. The family visited the duck pond and the pet's corner in the park, with its rabbits, guinea pigs and of course ducks. About a hundred yards up the road, although it seemed much further at the time, were a group of shops which included most memorably the newsagents, Ecclesley's. It sold confectionery. Here, up until the early 1950s, Richard and Roger traded in their coupons for sweets during the long period of post-war rationing. Rationing was part of life through Manchester years, and even to 1953 for the first year in Radlett. Dorothy wrote, Roger has an insatiable appetite for sweets, something else which stayed with him for the rest of his life. In 1948, Dorothy recorded that the boys got 6D a week pocket money. Both boys had bikes. Roger got it as a birthday present from Dean Road Granny and Grandad in 1949. They were his maternal grandparents. He disappeared one day on his tricycle and after searching nearby, Ted and Dorothy, worried sick, rang the police. He was fine, happy as Larry, sat in the police station drinking tea. Dorothy's parents had an Anderson shelter in their back garden and after the war, Grandad had converted it into a carpentry workshop. One product of his woodworking was the swing, which started its life in 1946 in the Manchester back garden and then travelled to Radlett, the Isle of Wight and back to Manchester, having been used by Roger and Richard, Roger's children, Jan and Richard's children and all the grandchildren. After Dorothy's parents moved up to Manchester in July 1945, they were regularly visited at their new house in Didsbury. Ted's father died in February 1945, and so was never part of Roger's life. Slightly further away were Great Uncle Ted and Great Aunt Rosie, Great Granny Brown's unmarried siblings who lived in Buxton. This photo records a visit in June 1948. As for all families, the year was punctuated by festivals and school holidays. There were fireworks in the back garden on bonfire night, which Ted organised with great care. This was accompanied by treacle toffee and parking. 
When they were a bit older, they also went to big bonfires around the corner near the Cotton Tree pub. Christmas was making paper chains from gum strips of pale blue and pink paper and looping them around the living room walls. But perhaps the most vivid memory was of the tradition of hanging a white pillowcase at the end of their beds on Christmas Eve and the excitement of waking in the morning to find them bulging with mysterious shapes. In 1946 and 1947, the family holidayed in July at Rosnia on Anglesey. They stayed in a B&B run by Mrs Jones. A family story recounts how one morning Richard and Roger were found kneeling up in bed, pulling off strips of wallpaper. Ted had to pin it back on with drawing pins. Despite this, Mrs Jones became very fond of the brothers and called them her dear boys. After this, most of their two-week breaks were in the south starting in August 1948, with Dupal Holiday Camp near St Austell in Cornwall. There, this was where Dorothy and Ted had met and was always a very special place for them. After moving to Radlett, several more holidays were spent there. In 1950, Ted sold the Morris after 12 years' use and moved upmarket to the larger Vauxhall Wyvern. Roger and Richard went to Lady Barn Primary School, aka Briarsfield Road School. When Richard was about nine, he began learning the piano and Roger the violin. Ted had been taught the violin by his father and his brother Leslie had learnt the piano. And as Grandfather Brown had been a professional musician all his life, it was natural that Richard and Roger should have followed in the family tradition. Neither of them ever showed great promise, unlike the daughter of one of Ted's Institute friends, Jacqueline Dupre. Roger, part of the first generation to grow up under the umbrella of the National Health Service, the family GP was the unfortunately named Dr Savage. He had a surgery in Fallowfield with a leather-covered examination couch. According to Ted's memoir, both Roger and Richard had chickenpox, and Dorothy recorded both of the boys having measles, German measles, and whooping cough in the early 1940s. Ted believed that debt was to be avoided at all costs and must have saved a significant part of his salary with a view to buying their next house. In June 1953, shortly before moving south, the family went down to London for the coronation. They stood in the street somewhere to watch the pageant, but later, watching it on television was probably more exciting. That summer, the first part of Roger's life came to an end. <laughs> <laughs> 